Greetings, I'm Rob Chapman, and welcome <laughs> to Anderton's oh. in Guildford. Pardon me, I'm sorry for interrupting you. You're but you normally welcome. leave me a pause to say I'm the captain, and then you say welcome to Anderton's. I was just Please. so keen and eager to get this review <laughs> underway that I figured I would jump a gun. Jump that gun. Fine. Like, as if I was looking to the distance at the horizon and saying, <coughs> just bring, bring it, it to me. me. Bring, bring it to me. me. Bring it to me, Lee Malia. Bring me that horizon. Yes. Uh, could you bring someone a horizon? You know, when my boy is slightly older, and he is able to walk around and fetch things. Yes. If I ever get a hunger and I'm in town, I might say, bring me that pie, son. <laughs> and if I ever move to America and uh, change my mobile phone contract from uh, EE to one of the American ones, Who I might you go say with? to my daughter, bring me the variety. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best we could come up with in about an hour of faffing around. <laughs> There's nothing uh, else for Amazon Horizon, so I'm sorry. Lee Malia, uh, guitar player in uh, the very popular band, <coughs> Bring Me The Horizon. Uh, high gain, metal tones, Hi. shouty oh. singer. Um, shouty singer. And a few years back, uh, his first signature guitar with Epiphone was the sort of uh, Les Paul Artisan inspired um, Lee Malia signature, this one here that I'm holding. And then earlier this year, he sort of basically uh, changed a, an explorer up to kind of have the same kind of vibe as his Les Paul. Uh, it's the, the evolution of Malia. It is. The coolest one, I think, because this guitar hasn't been available in an Epiphone model, at least, and hardly ever in a Gibson model since uh, the early 80s, which is the uh, Gibson, R sorry, the Epiphone RD shape. Well, a lot of people say the 80s were bad, but I thought they were great. And this is a stunning indictment. <laughs> Yeah, well, fact. this this is a, this is another one. There was a whole, um, you know, it was a whole uh, period of time uh, at Gibson and Fender, to be fair, where they were kind of making crazy shaped guitars that that either never saw the light of day or perhaps you know were only available you know for for a few years. So this was first introduced into the Gibson catalogue in 1977 and then was discontinued in 1982. Uh, it was at a time when the company that owned Gibson also owned Moog or Maug. Keyboard. Moog. Yes, Moog. Who, I'll be honest with you, I bear a striking resemblance to uh, Bob Moog, which well, Rory may Well, there are some who say now. you bear a striking resemblance to Mr. Moog, and there are some who say that you are Mr. Moog. I'm definitely not Mr. Moog. I could be his love child. I need to talk to my mum about that. And, and um, since this is the day mm -hmm. that the government have officially announced there's a $22 million UFO program. I heard that. The American government have, yeah. And yet, it doesn't seem to be any kind of news. $22 million wouldn't pay for a lot, would it really? But what they're saying is there's a UFO program. Yeah. They're saying it's, it's a genuine it's thing. It's a thing. Well, they, they, I say that because I read that same article a few days ago, actually, so it can't be that new. That news but should they, be overshadowed uh, by the fact that Lee is clearly a time-travelling keyboard uh, enthusiast. What the news was, was was that they'd actually closed it down uh, rather than they Well, started. they made it they just, go under. They just admitted that it existed. They took it from daylight yes. to, to dark. Uh, and the chap, the American general or whatever it was who was in charge of it, just said, yeah, there's loads, loads of stuff. We don't know if it's China or Russia or aliens or what, but there is weird stuff out there. A bit like this guitar. Good yes. link. So, Good link. let me give you some tones quickly. You must forgive me. I'm tethered to this chair, and it is on a gain tone. But Perhaps I'm we, sure we need it. We need a human foot switch. Well, I could do the gain some... tones first. Okay, I'll and then you could tell me about the little trap door on the back of yeah, my guitar. Yeah, sure. Because sure. I figure that might be kind of a cool thing. Cool. But before we do that, here's a cool thumbnail.
it's quite bright and sort of honky and nasal. Well, it's so it's a tiny bit different to the original Gibson RD in uh, a few reasons. The, probably the most obvious difference is that uh, the Lee Malia kind of thing is to have a P90 pickup at the neck and a, and a humbucker at the bridge. They're, they're all, even though this is an Epiphone guitar, these are all Gibson USA. Um, Wait, pickups. do that again. Um, so yeah, humbucker here, P90 here. P90 is basically like a fat single coil kind of sounding pickup. The original RD was a 25 and a half inch scale length guitar, so a little bit uh, longer scale length than typically you'd see on a, you know, on a Gibson guitar. Uh, but the Lee Malia <coughs> RD is 24 and three quarter inch, so it's exactly the same scale length as the Les Paul or the Explorer. Viewers might be forgiven for thinking there were just two pickups in this guitar. That's right. Look, here are my two pickups, but. What's under the trapdoor, Lee? So the idea under the trapdoor, give it, give, chuck me the, chuck me the RD, because I'll sort of, it's probably easier to do this on a, on a cleaner tone. Than uh, this is a feature that's on all the, the Lee Malia uh, Epiphone guitars, which is a dummy coil in the guitar underneath the, the, the um, well, basically underneath the wood here, where you can't see it. Uh, and the idea is, is that it does make, it does help reduce some of the hum that you would typically get from a single coil pickup. So I can't switch the dummy coil on or off, so there's no way to sort of demonstrate what it might be like without it, but. That's the, so you can still hear, it's a fat sounding pickup. It's not thin like a, you know, it's like a, um, it's not like a sort of a, a Telecaster kind of sound. It's still, still fat sounding. The humbucker at the back. So it's a lot more gainy. Both together. And I do have a coil tap. Obviously it only works on the, on the humbucker. It doesn't do anything on this one, but. So some of the other spec on the RD is it's, uh, in fact, again, all of Lee Malia's guitars. We should probably put this more in the middle so you can actually see it. I could it. just hold this so people can, can see it, it like this. So they're all mahogany. He doesn't believe in using <coughs> maple flame tops or anything like that. So all mahogany guitars. Yeah. Um, Who'd want to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Don't believe it. Um, Rosewood fingerboards for the time being anyway. Lots of guitar manufacturers are discovering the difficulties of uh, using rosewood and, and sending guitars around the world and at the I, moment, I must, so. I must admit, Lee, I think these could do with a touch of, of, of uh, oil. Well. Maybe some snake oil. Maybe some snake oil. I don't know, this would, one's got uh, a nice board on it, to be honest with you, but that, so I don't know uh, spec-wise now. I expect to see lots of manufacturers just changing the spec of their guitars halfway through production. Um, what else can I tell you about these guitars? Regular, you know, gold hardware, regular style tuners, uh, a set neck as you would expect on you know most Gibson guitars. This looks like a man with a moustache. That does. Well that look do you know what that looks like? That instantly reminded me of a pair of testicles either side of the moustache. <laughs> kind of been, you've been teabagged there haven't you? Do you know um, uh, can I tell you about my two sack spectac? Yes. When you're <laughs> when you're alone at home mm. and it's time for a proper British cup of tea do you need a big tea? Because you're thirsty as well as just want a tea for the nourishment. Mm -hmm. You know, that tea nourishment, all the minerals and vitamins. Sometimes you want just a standard builders, but sometimes you want to be a bit cheeky and add an edge. Maybe put in, you know, a bit of Earl Grey. So you put a regular tea bag and an Earl Grey tea bag, and it's the two sack spectac. <laughs> two spectac. Two, two sack, sack spectac. Spec Ooh, that's interesting. See, yeah. uh, Earl Grey's a bit floral for me. I love a bit of a floral Earl Grey. No, note. I'm not, not an Earl Grey. I'll do, I'll do a mint tea or, or a, a ginger. Then you are not tea. truly British, uh, Lee. Or a builder's tea. Builder's tea's good, Assam, that's British. Assam tea Assam Assam is tea's good. Nice. Have you tried Lapsang Souchon? Uh, Taste I of bacon. Once. I'm never doing it again, though, to be honest. I pulled a muscle. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else tastes of bacon? <laughs> Do, I, uh, the air in California I, when I was there. Really? Do you yeah. know what? I found a great way to, uh, if you ever want to do a South African accent, this is, I've completely ripped this off of a show, that I, a TV show I was watching. Beer can. No, that's, uh, that's Jamaican, isn't it? Right. Beer can. Uh, if you want to say ice cream yeah. in a South African accent, you say ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. I would like an ice cream. A diamond the size <laughs> of a baby's fist. 
Get me a gun of goat. Rub me in some ass cream. <laughs> anyway, so uh, why don't you just put the uh, put the angry Charlie through it? This is a good listen, combination of pedals, by the way. So I've got here a clean amp, angry Charlie AT, Clon. Delay. Would be interested to know what amplifier he uses because there is a particular Old nasal. Marshalls, apparently, right, Old, very Marshally stuff. His, so, his rig, so uh, loud and sort of dark. Oh uh, well, I've never seen them live. I've only heard their album stuff. And You're not a fan of their stuff with the orchestras. Uh, I really like the newer guitar riffs, and I don't like bands with shouty singers in them. So I kind of, I, I can't. Uh, I find that all too difficult. I've been Rob Chapman. I've been the captain. These have been Lee Malia's awesome Epiphone guitars. I shall put links in the description below. And the new Star Wars song was okay. everybody, thanks for watching the Anderton's Guitar YouTube channel. If you're a drummer or a keyboard player or interested in music technology, you might find one of our other channels interesting and I'll put details of those in the description below. If you want to find out more about the products we've just featured, please click here. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt like this, please click here. If you want to watch another video on our guitar channel, click down here. And to subscribe to our guitar channel, click here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.